A shift register is one of those chips that can do all kinds of surprising things. One thing you can do with it is hook it up to the inputs on the front of your device. Let's say we have an 8-bit shift register. Let's say we put the following pattern in it. Seven zeros and a one. In other words, all zeros except for one one. So when you forget the parallel aspect of a shift register, or if you have a shift register that doesn't have a parallel aspect, you basically shift the bits in one direction or shift them in the other. And then when you shift them, let's say left, according to this board, whatever gets put in the leftmost bit is off of a certain pin, and then shift the other way, there's a different pin that says what gets put in there. If nothing's connected, then it's floating and it's garbage. So you can either connect specific voltages to those two pins, or you can tie them together so that if you shift this way, then this bit goes into this end, and if you shift this way, then this bit goes into this end. So what you get, you can shift the one over. I'll show you this with LEDs in a minute, but you can keep shifting the one to any of these places and you can shift it back again. This can be used to activate one of several sub-circuits. For example, you could have a button or two buttons even on the front of your device left and right, and they're connected to a shift register and they'll shift it one direction or another. On boot up, you put this pattern in there and then as the user presses as the button, it selects what mode of operation you're in. You could also plug this into an encoder, something that takes the single bit on and converts it to a binary number, which you can plug into a microcontroller and read which one is on. So your microcontroller wouldn't have to interface with the button in any way. That can all be hardwired at the front, and then you just have a quick little ribbon cable running back where it reads which option is currently selected. And from there, if you subsequently wanted to, you could plug the encoder into a DAC, and by doing that, you get a variable voltage. So, if you're trying to drive something with a variable voltage, sometimes doing it this way works, because you could put the one through different resistors, assuming you have, you know, a power amplifier or your shift register has power. But you could also put this into an encoder and put that into a DAC and then put that into something. And you could even do that if you wanted to read the input with an analog pin instead, which I wouldn't recommend. I mean, it takes fewer pins, but it's much slower. But, you know, whatever you want. The wonderful thing about digital electronics electronics is you can just plug things together like a little Lego any way you want. But there's another trick. What if instead of having it circular, instead of that, what if we hard plug on this end a zero and on this end a one? So when we shift this way, we add ones. Every time we shift one way, we add ones. And then if we shift the other way, that one's adding zeros. So they go back to zeros when you shift the other way. This may be useful for you. So you can see you can have different patterns loaded to suit every occasion. So let me give you a more clear demonstration. So I have here a shift register with a few switches and my debounced button board and my output display board. These eight bits are displaying the parallel output of the shift register as it is now, five volt supply. So unfortunately, the shift register I'm using right now requires two switches to be set to select the mode. In other words, there's two pins that select the mode, shifting one way or shifting the other. There are a million different shift registers on the market, so you would want to get one that has like a left pin and a right pin or something, so that you could have just a single push button connected to each one. I am guarantee 100% they make it. But anyway, now I've gone ahead and cleared the output, and I'm going to shift a single bit in, so my device has now rebooted and I have my one put in there. I'm going to make it circular, and then if I shift one way, the one just keeps going around and around and around and around. And if I change the shift direction to be the other way, then the one goes the other way, and it'll just circle around forever if I don't have a malfunction. Let me fix that. So anyway, it'll go around and around and around, and you'll do this on a PCB rather than a breadboard that keeps having loose wires. Anyway, you get the point. So that's the, the circulating one idea. On the other hand, if I do what I said and I tie this end to zero and this end to one, then I can add ones, one at a time, just like so. If I shift the other direction, I remove them. Well, in this case, sometimes two by two. <sighs> you, you get the point. Solderless breadboards are not always the best things in the world, but yes. See, it doesn't matter if I test to make sure it works beforehand, because in the meantime, I've touched the board and some wire has come loose and who knows which one it is. But I assure you, this is working fine. It's just, you get it. So there. 
It works, you can believe me, I have a trustworthy face. I just don't have trustworthy breadboards. So yes, if you want to do something like this, make sure you buy a shift register that has a single pin, like two different clocks basically, a shift clock this way and a shift clock that way. In the future, I will go over the circuitry required to do a fancy little boot up sequence to make sure the shift register is initialized properly. But you can always just hook it up to your microcontroller in different ways. You could have a, a tiny little 20 cent microcontroller connected around to do the boot up routine and then you turn it off again. There's options. So you can keep your bits going round and round in circles. And I'll be seeing you.